So welcome everybody to another episode of the Rematches Clubcast. Here is what you have to look forward to in tonight's episode. Is there any trick to opening one of these, or is it just like champagne? Um, you hold it, hold it first. You gotta look. You gotta look at. Make sure the top has a star on it. And right. If the star, here. if the star changes colors as you open it, then you've got the winner. That's it. So okay. just give that, right. give that a shot. It oh. might pop out, and that's when you get the leprechaun. Wiggle. Oh boy, this is a poor they, decision. Is it a is it a brawny paper towel though? Nothing that's like the, buying a beer you can't drink. He didn't respond. We got movement. Also just. Oh, it's nudging. Oh god. Oh. Oh. Don't okay. shard the glass. <laughs> Phil's packages in the potty. Yeah, they love two FedEx packages. I was like, dude, who the hell does this? Like, I was, I was the only one in there. Look, man, I don't FedEx poop very often, so I don't <laughs> but know. When I do. <laughs> <laughs> this, this spot brought to you by FedEx. <laughs> Get your shit there on top. You just missed the birth of your child. <laughs> we need you to cut the cord now, sir. It's been. Eight hours. No. <laughs> can I use the master sword? <laughs> yeah, right. Can I use the master sword? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I have the same sentiments on my sexy Spider-Man costume. <laughs> I I agree with that. Uh, but let's think about it. You know, it, we can have some some cool insight uh, into the administration of Cloud City with Lobot. I mean... <laughs> Drop the Lobot, Ralph! <laughs> you really want like, the Lobot. Like, like, what if he has, like, a day that's fully packed with meetings, and it's just, like, it is a bruiser. You, you know, he you're talking... To, he, Santa, set off. he just continues to nod, and he has to meet with sanitation for Cloud City. He's got to meet with friggin', uh, I mean... It, and he just goes back to filing, like after all the Cloud City stuff's done. He's like, "Well, that was crazy." And he's like, "Well, I'm just gonna, just gonna file all this stuff. This is nuts. Like, <laughs> these can you believe these files?" And he, you know, the guy with the vagina face is there, and he's like, "I know, right? These files, right?" <laughs> I don't know. If you Google vagina face Star Wars, you find him. <laughs> <laughs> Do you really? Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Welcome to the official podcast of the Brewmasters Club, Craft Brews and Geek News. Sit back, pour yourself a pint, and let's get into it. Now here's the founder of the Brewmasters Club and your host, Donnie Gallagher. Good evening, Craft Beer. My name is Donnie. I'm the official uh, host and, uh, well, co-host, uh, shit, <laughs> co-host of the official Brewmasters Club podcast here. We're called Craft Brews and Geek News. We have a packed show for you. We are the podcast that talks about national stories, local flavors, and our favorite geeky nuggets of pop culture. Um, I am joined this evening by two lovely and uh, forthright handsome young men. Uh, Mr. Lausman, coming all the way from Lakeland. How are you, sir? Doing quite well today. I'm very excited about the show. Excellent. And of course, uh, our resident Brood Boy 813 who is the star of this evening's show, at least the first <laughs> half here. Ryan, how are you tonight? I'm doing wonderful, Donnie, and thank you for the wonderful, amazing introduction as well. Well, I've just learned that flattery will get me everywhere, so that's what I do. <laughs> From you, ah. I believe it. <laughs> How you guys been, man? I feel like uh, we haven't chatted in a while. Anybody do anything interesting recently? Tons of stuff. Brew yeah. beers, <laughs> watching movies, going to show, uh, brew fests. It's all good. Fun fact about today, somebody left to FedEx um, in the men's restroom, and I was like, who does this? Like, They just forgot him. They straight ghosted him. And I was like, oh. <laughs> and so I put those potty FedExes in the FedEx machine, and I guess they'll make it there in two days. I don't know. Is they po Wait, potty? What? They left them in the potty. That's not on me. <laughs> those packages in the potty? Yeah, they left two FedEx packages. I was like, dude, who the hell does this? Like, I was, I was the only one in there. <laughs> walk into their car not even remembering why they or what they had in their hands and then they get home and like oh shit they're like i brought all this poop into my car and i forgot the <laughs> fedex i mixed them up <laughs> how would you mix them up you have to push them <laughs> out somewhere that's awesome look man i don't fedex poop very often so <laughs> i don't know when i do <laughs> <laughs> this this spot brought to you by FedEx. <laughs> Get your shit there on top. <laughs> well, we didn't just 
we did just... sorry for everyone driving to work listening to this like that has to get there on time or else they're just gonna crap their pants because they're I... thinking like i should have shit oh. before I left the house and now these guys are just I... talking about shit <laughs> I, I only feel bad for the people who are driving to work who are fedex who are actually driving <laughs> packages to their work i feel we bad didn't for start this we didn't start this podcast to shit talk can we please move on yes oh right. you're quite the potty mouth tonight aren't you donnie <laughs> All right, it's enough. We always oh, start off the show by uh, uh, picking out a couple select brews um, that we can talk about and share with you guys. I have something very interesting. Laos almost killed himself uh, by opening the one that he had, and I'm sure Ryan has a tasty little surprise. I think, Ryan, you typically go first. Um, Laos, man, you want to uh, you want to start us off? Yes, because I know nothing about this beer and don't even know why I picked it out. And I'm just, I'm, I was very lost in a, in a total wine. So um, what I have tonight is the, I don't even know if I know how to say this, the Ohm Gang, um, which is based out of Cooperstown, New York. It's the Three Philosophers. Mm. Hey. Three Philosophers is a very, very good beer. Oh, so you guys have had it. Very cool. Yeah, I've, I've had it. It's very good beer. Oh. They make the Game of Thrones beers. Oh, it's really cool, actually. <laughs> well, that's pretty sweet. Well, yeah, this is—it's it, definitely not something I would have normally picked out, but um, but it is—it is a lovely, uh, it is a lovely ale. Um, it says it's a ninety-eight percent quadruple ale with two mm. percent of white. Ch- wait, two percent yeah. with cherries added. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Kind of crazy. You can really taste the cherries, but uh, a little darker than I probably would have picked if I knew what it was before I grabbed it. But uh, it's overall, like a, good. it's like a black cherry Belgian. It's actually really good. The, it, it's a quadruple. I love, I love those beers. And yeah. like I said, that I had, the, I've had the the Game of Thrones one, and, and it's um one of the Game of Thrones one, and it's really good. Yeah, Ryan, have you had, have you had these yet? I have not. No. <laughs> They're like 4.5, 4.7 on, on uh, Beer Advocate, dude. They're they're real good. That's awesome. They're also uh, 9.8 ABV. Yeah, yeah, Believe. very high in alcohol. Yeah, and so now we... Oh, 9.7, sorry. <clears throat> in a bomber. Yeah. Sounds like fun. Sounds like a, a blast. Yeah. Sounds yeah. delicious. <laughs> it is really save good, actually. No. Nope, not doing that. Ryan, I <laughs> did save you one. Of, I did save you. I saved you one of mine, though. If you want me to go next, I can. Yeah, please. You guys are gonna, you guys are gonna flip your shits. I have a Budweiser oh, Repeal the... Reserve, mm-hmm. which is probably one of the only times you'll see a, a Budweiser on this podcast. But as we are um, faithful stewards of not only the podcasting community but the beer craft beer community, it is only in our um, due diligence to try, try what's out there, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, we have to to have it honest and in. in forthright opinion of, of what even the biggest guys are doing and and to do so i felt it right to uh, they launched this beer in october 27th of this year so right before halloween and the idea behind it is that this was the beer that um adult uh, adolphus bush actually was brewing and drinking with his friends um and then prohibition struck and of course uh they couldn't make the beer anymore it's an amber lager and it's it's tastes uh, very similar to to a Budweiser, except it totally tastes different. It's almost like their Mars. And um, when I say similar, it's it's got that light finish like like Budweiser and whatnot has because of the rice and the adjunct grains and the patented beechwood system that they use. Um, so it drinks very light, but there's something about it that's just not right. It, it, it's a good looking color. It, it looks great. I mean, it, it it tastes like similar to a craft beer. It's 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 definitely similar. It's caramely and it's actually got like a grassy kind of piney taste to it. Very malty. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. I got somebody else to try it and they couldn't even drink half of it. Um, I I don't know. It's certainly not my favorite, but again, in our due diligence, we we it, it is our responsibility to try it. The other thing that kind of irks me, and maybe it's just because I'm a, a bit of a OCD, but they claim that this is Adolphus's beer that he made and then had to stop making for Prohibition. Laos, quick history lesson: when when did Prohibition happen? Nineteen thirty three. Nineteen nineteen thirty three 1933 is when Prohibition. Um, well, three well, three ended. You're right. At thirty one is when it started, and we'll we'll get emails and text for this. <laughs> When when prohibition was repealed is what this logger is all about. The problem is that Mr. Adolphus 
or A B, as I call him, or Mr. Adolf. Let's just call him Mr. Adolf for sure. No, let's not do that. Um, <laughs> let's, not do that. <laughs> let's not do that. Wrong guy. He passed, Wrong guy. <laughs> he passed away on uh, on in October of 1913. So how the hell <laughs> were they drinking this beer um, after Prohibition that that Mr. Adolf was so proud of? So I, I, it's a great a series of hoses. Little, it's a series <laughs> of hoses. That's how he's drinking it after he was passed on. <laughs> Right, yeah, because he was dead, and and that was his beer. So what, whatever, that's fine. Um, went to the grave and said, "One for my homie." That's there you yeah. Go. Uh, so so it's a little contradictory there, but I think that's more of a PR stunt than anything else, especially with craft beer. So we'll see where this goes. Again, if you if you've had the Budweiser Marzen, it's reminiscent of that. It's very caramely. It's not very sweet. It's not very hoppy, and I get like a weird grass caramel flavor out of it. It's very odd. Um, but it is not my favorite. So, so in addition, I brought a sidecar um, from <laughs> from uh, Sierra Nevada because I love them and they're our unofficial sponsor. So, uh, Ryan, I think you had something to drink. Uh, well, firstly, I was going to say thank you for saving me one of those, and I look forward to trying. I'll save it you out. two. No, you I, can have them both. I'll just bring them home and <laughs> save them for a rainy day when I'm dry. Uh, <laughs> oh boy. But um, no lucky. No lucky. Oh, that's terrible. So I actually brought to the table this evening a Sierra Nevada. I think I might have sent you guys a photo of this a couple weeks ago, but I went back to Publix tonight and they had the uh, the, the, the 12 pack of, you know, three or four different uh, styles of beer. This one here is the Winter Tide Ale. It's an all brewed or an ale brewed with spices. It's absolutely fantastic. I had it a couple weeks ago, could not get enough of it. Uh, you get a lot of cinnamon, nutmeg, you get a lot of caramel, uh, rich flavors, a little bit of ginger. I mean, everything just comes together. It's it's really a fantastic beer. Um, I actually sent this to a buddy of mine that was looking for me to brew something like this. Uh, he works for a local pub here in Tampa. As soon as I sent him the picture, I was like, this is the beer you were looking for. <laughs> <laughs> nice. nice. I, I sent him one. Uh, my dad was actually going up there, took him one that I had in the box. Um, and then he ordered some for the bar. So word travels fast but this is definitely if you can get your hands on this winter ale uh it's called the winter tide from sierra nevada it's totally worth it it's fantastic well and i did hear that winter this, i was gonna say if you're if you're listening to this in summertime um i wouldn't recommend it <laughs> and i was i was gonna say they say winter tide is coming that's yes i like it I mean, it's already here. It was bottled on the really 25. Know. It's already here, but yes, I like where you were going. So next year, they should use Winter Tide is coming. What were you going to say there, Ryan? I feel like I cut you off with of that shitty joke. No, no, I, I appreciated the shitty joke because, you know, it's all about toilets and packages <laughs> today. So No, it's not. Tell me about no, it. No, it's not. This is a, That's my day. We are a professional podcast. We do not talk about poops. Sometimes when you're out of no. shit, that's all you got to talk about. I mean, all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now, I, I talk about poops a lot in my line of work. Yep. All right, so yes, uh, great so beer. Not... Go get one. <laughs> okay, good. And and seriously, if you want to try something new from Budweiser, I wasn't I wasn't trying to to take a crap on it or anything. It's just it's just <laughs> uh, I appreciate you know. Really, we have to try what's out there, right? Because you never know. And there was a time when when Budweiser was uh, they they were you know try all these different beers because only Budweiser could do it. So. Um, Reminiscent of that again. I'm, I'm I taste a lot of that Marzen in there, but um, it's just there's something about it. It's boozy too. It's six six and a half percent, I think. So or six point one. So it's a little bit more than a bud. But anyways, uh, enough about that. Well, thank you guys. Those are those are great. And last, I really hope you uh, Omega. I think it's Omega. I think it's how you pronounce oh. it. Omega. Oh yeah, actually that sounds about right. Omega. Yeah. Uh, but it's really good, and I would I would tell you to try a couple of the other ones because everything I've tried for them is is good. They're a traditional brewery, so they brew very traditional beers, and they do them very well. Um, so I'm a fan. I like yeah, it. That dark cherry one, though, sounds that three philosophers is good. That Danny Hudson brought me out of that beer for the first time ever. What? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, moving on, uh, we we use this section here to talk about uh, craft beer uh, craft beers in the nation, craft beer stories that are local, craft beer stories that have affected us. Um, as I mentioned, we've got a packed show tonight, and Ryan is kind of uh, leading this uh, this forefront. So, Ryan, we've got a couple stories here that actually all uh, all revolve around the past few weeks with our good guy, uh, Mister Broodboy Eight One Three, and we've been teasing some of these things that that have been coming up for weeks. Um, so, I want to know, you know. Some of these were 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 some some cool stuff. So Ryan, kick us off and, and tell us first about about Kidney Fest and how that went down. I heard it was a great charity, great time, great turnout. 
Yeah, it was um, definitely something different. If you've only ever been to beer fest before, but never actually been behind the table to serve, which I know, Donnie, you have. Last man, I can't remember if, if you helped us pour that day uh, no. that we were at it. Uh, but it's it's different to experience, you know, not just the people like they weren't they, this. This was, uh, you know, people weren't just out there to get drunk. I mean, yeah, they were having a good time. They were having a good, you know, uh, uh, good, good buzz going on. But they were trying all the different beers and stuff like that. So it was different to actually get that perspective as opposed to just holding my cup out to get it filled with beer and tasting it and going to table to table. Uh, one of the cool things that, you know, just to see the reaction from people as they were trying the different beers uh because i was pouring with tim from craft life so he had his sunny honey on tap he had his to coconut which was fantastic donnie you would have loved it full i'm full sure coconut aroma yeah I'm um, sure how was the flavor also, on that i don't think i've had that one yet no you haven't had that one yet uh, unless you, you went up there i i thought it was well balanced and along the lines of like a last snow you know did it miss a little bit yeah i mean i, I compare everything to the last snow but um you know, rich, full flavor, had some uh, good aromas from the coffee. So I thought it was a uh, job well done, but it was neat to see the people's reaction to that. And then to have my beer there um, and to see their reaction with the jalapeno IPA that I, that I brewed, um, that was, it was just rewarding to, to say the that's, least. It was just yeah, really neat. That's the question that I had for you. How is it pouring your own beer? And, and you brought, you brought a whole keg, right? Five gallons? Five gallons of it. And I, so it was a capped event. So there was so many other types of beers and so much beer at the event, but it was capped to like a hundred people. So there was way more beer than there was stomach space. So nice. I brought two nice. gallons of it home. I'm actually drinking the last little bit of it because I was able to save it from the keg, but um, it it was neat to to see people drinking my beer. And then as I was telling them the story, I know Donnie, you, you said that, you know, I'm good with sales and stuff like that, but it's different when, you know, you're passionate about something, you end up just wanting to talk about it. And that's when the, you're talking true, about it, that's, true that's, sales that's really there. it, you know, yep. uh, cause then you're, you're telling, you're not selling. It's completely different. Right. I got to tell them about Ashley. And so it was really neat. The feedback was really good. Um, met a couple of really good people. There was one guy that I met from uh Hogtown Brewers um, association out of Gainesville, Florida. As I had a conversation with him, he ended up telling me that he was a certified beer judge. And I was like, well, I have a beer that I'd love you love your judgment on. And I brought him over to my booth and or our, our tent. And he had some of the jalapeno IPA and he he could not get enough of it. His fellow uh brewers that he was with could not get enough of it. So the feedback was really good, even from a judge's standpoint. So that's that was promising for the direction that I would like to end up going one day. You Did know? you get any criticism like uh, too strong or I don't like this or I think you so, missed, we were off the mark here? Or... You know, it's funny. The only criticism I got was from people too intimidated by the word or by the name of the beer or by the fact that it had jalapenos in it. So, yeah, I, which, like which, is, which is off-putting. Yeah, which is off-putting. Yeah, it's very off-putting. You're like, oh, no, I don't want all that spice. I don't want to be on fire, blah, blah, blah. It's the name itself. Now I think about it is kind of misleading. Because even though it's named after Ashley, it's not an overly spicy beer. It's a it's a good blend of beer, um, but they ended up trying it anyway, and I had some pretty good reaction. But then there were some that uh, just were not craft beer drinkers that that were there for you know whatever reason and having fun, and they didn't really like it. So I mean, I did have that that kind of uh, feedback for, but for craft from craft beer drinkers, they they enjoyed it. Awesome. And then lastly, how was the event? Did it was it a success for what you were trying to do? Did you guys raise some money? Do you want to thank anybody out there particularly or um no, I thought the event went really well. Um got to meet meet Jenny, the uh the 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 lady that everything was for was to raise money to help her uh pay off some of her medical bills from having a kidney uh operation a couple of years ago. I think this was the third kidney fest that they did. So it was really neat to get to meet her and to meet her family. And I mean, everybody was really involved and they also give back. So as far as, you know, I don't know how much they raised. I don't know how much the, the, the bar keeps or anything like that, or the, the, the brewery keeps, but I do know that they raised a lot of money and they also give back to other people that are in the same situation. So it, it feeds multiple pots, if that makes sense. So. So a big thank you to everybody that that may have heard it on the podcast here or, or went out and supported it anyways. Um, we appreciate you and I know that Ryan did because uh, he learned a lot and had a great time and, and hopefully Miss Jeannie, uh, you know, was, was success for her as well.
Yeah, and the only thing I so the only thing I would say from the entire event, it was so good. But like I said, there was so much beer there, but not enough bellies to fill it. And I I, I know it was capped. It's a small area out there at Marker Forty Eight. The only thing I would say is to try to next year maybe increase that to, you know, either one hundred and fifty, two hundred people, or tell all the brewers like, hey bring two different kegs or something like that, or, or can some beers and bring those because there was far too much beer than there were bellies to put it in. So, you know, it was charity and everybody was overzealous. I think that's great. Yeah. I say, go for it. Well, well that's, thank you. That's true. That's true. Yeah. All right. Well, that's a good story, man. I'll move on to the next one. Before we do so, we had a new addition, uh, jumped on the cast, a long time listener, long time host, Mr. Dano. How are hey, you, sir? I'm doing great. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening, sir. How are you? Goodbye. I'm doing very well. Yeah. <laughs> Goodbye. I'm doing Goodbye. well. Um, what's going on in your life, Dan? You want to fill us in? Been a, been a week or two? Had some vacation time. Just got back to the groove of things and then actually just got on to more vacation time. Um, November, oh. December are really, really good for, for the military. So um, for Veterans Day, getting four days off here starting today. Um, just doing dad stuff. <laughs> that so, stuff you, you um, can start saying things like as a father I... yeah as a father uh maybe, <laughs> maybe uh is eight months tomorrow so, oh, congratulations yeah she's yeah. a little stinker and, and that's why i'm here at uh this time and not 30 minutes ago <laughs> all in all in good fun cool we got you for a little bit yeah wearing uh wearing a lot of jean jackets these days <laughs> doing dad stuff yeah Sip it on coffee, just <laughs> a little, a little too steamy. Just <laughs> hey, give it a minute. The best photo I uh, ever took with my dad was when we were both wearing jean jackets. So, and he still remembers that. to this day because he's I still have it on my jacket. picture panel right over here. <laughs> he still <laughs> has the jacket. That Canadian yeah, is, tuxedo. Is it, is it half is it frame with the jacket, or is it not with the jacket? I wish I had that jacket still. That was my favorite jacket ever. Because my like dad, a, like he a, had a jean jacket, and I was like, Mom, I want one of those, and I got it for Christmas, and that was that. Was that. It was the coolest day of like my life. Like a jean-bound sort of picture <laughs> on your mantle? Yeah, me to, I'll grab the picture right now. Like, I will no, go, I and it's right here. Nope, it's okay. Uh, it's all right. <laughs> but my Just, Christmas is right on the corner, buddy. I will get you that jacket. Great call. So, so Dane... Call. We were right in the middle of um, of the uh, the tail. Actually, we're in the tail end of our beer section. But Ryan has um, two more stories. He's had an eventful week or two here. He did a charity where he's pouring his own beer, the Wildfire IPA. Yep. Um, and then he had a couple of interesting conversations with some local folks. Uh, first off, this brew place. Ryan, give us the elevator pitch of brew, and then tell us about the uh, the other Budweiser drinker that you, you met there and how yeah. you were kind of swaying opinions and and cha- shaping minds. Yeah, so this uh, local place opened up. It's not a brewery, but they go by brew, and it's a local uh, growler fill place, but they also have a ton of different craft beers uh, on on tap that you can go and try, and they try to always get, um, you know, something that you're not normally going to get at, 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 at um, a local bar or something like that. They try to get the exclusive stuff. And um, it's like a cozy little nook. There's no TVs in there yet, but... The atmosphere is really great. Christian and Jill, their husband and wife, they've got kids. They do a great job running the place. And uh, two weeks ago, I think it was, uh, we were up there. They had a little Oktoberfest. The kids were outside. They were painting pumpkins and stuff. I had walked in, filled my beer, or asked them for another beer. There was this lady there that had come in to fill a growler for a friend. Like she was, the guy was like, "Well, what do you want?" He's, like, "I don't know." Something. That, he said he likes dark beer, so they filled her a growler of whatever they had on tap. And while she was waiting, she had one, and she ended up ordering the last snow. And she looked at him and was like, "Wow, this is really good." She goes, "I I drink Budweiser all the time. Like that's my go-to beer." And but this is really good. And right when I heard those words, I pulled out my phone. I was like, hey, I'm Ryan. I'm, I do a podcast. And, you know, it's really neat to hear what you just said. And, um, you know, I was like, can I ask you a couple of questions about your reaction to to drinking this beer, this last snow? And she was like, uh, and it went from like a conversation to like she got a little intimidated, but it was really cute at the same time. She's an older lady. She's like in her 60s, probably. Um and Donnie, do you have the clip? Are you going to play it or, or um, just I, insert it somewhere? 
Yeah, I do have it. I, like I said, there's a lot of background notes. What I'll do is I'll probably just, I'll, I'll clip it onto the end of this episode. So if you want to hear the interview, it'll be at the very end of this one. Yeah. Um, it just, it's only like two minutes long, I think. Uh, but it was kind of interesting just to hear her perspective. And essentially Ryan just kind of um, accosted this this young lady and was like, hey, I heard you don't drink Budweiser. And then you should drink this one. No, no, it's not like that at all. <laughs> She, she she was actually fascinated and kind of intrigued by it. So Ryan was kind of asking some probing questions as to why, which which I think is unique, especially because now learning that she was, you know, a, a, a more mature um, young lady, the uh, the interest is there as to, you know, why haven't you had this before and, and what made you decide to get this and, and what do you like about it? And Ryan kind of got some of those answers. So hats off to you, man. I think that's great. It was it was really neat. You know, it was almost like, and, and I'm, I'm not saying she lived under a rock or anything like that when I use this expression, but it was almost like seeing somebody come out from underneath the rock for the first time. Like their eyes are just wide open and like they see daylight and it's like, what have I been missing my whole life? You know, kind of thing. The and I asked her, rock. yeah, but she lived under. and I asked her the question. I was like, if you saw this beer on tap again, I said, would you, would you buy this beer? And she was like, absolutely. Now she had to leave. So she didn't finish all of it. And it was like, I mean, uh, it's probably still that much in the glass. So she only had a couple of sips, but she still really enjoyed it. Yeah. And odds are, you know, she's not going to go home and now go out and buy a couple of bombers of the, mm. of the last snow. But but she may have that story to carry with her and say, you know, there was this one time when I tried this. If that's like this, then I might try that. And that that's how you grow your palate. And that's how you get yeah. better. So I, I, Not better, but that's how you expand your taste. Right. And you never know. Like that lady would never have known unless you tried it. So so hats off to you, man. Um, Lossman, any questions on that? No. <laughs> I was sorry. I got a little distracted. I was a huge fan of watching Dane. It looked like he was clearing his own house. Go, 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 go. Yeah. Out. yeah. Okay. A maneuver. <laughs> Roger that. <laughs> so the, so the last story we have, and it's still um, about uh, the brew, the brew growler fill station. Um, but it was, it was just this new growler system filler, which I've also heard of. And I've seen it. I have one at that local liquor store here. Um, they are not exactly as craft beer tuned, but they have some, um, you know, some great beers that you can't get, and they fill it up um, with the same system. So, Ryan, tell us all about the Growler Station and their Pegasus system they use. Yep. Um, and firstly, before before I go into too much detail, there is a video that I post. It's about two minutes. It's on our Craft Brews and Geek News uh, Facebook page. If you want to go back and check on that, um, when I first went to brew, and I and somebody came in to fill a Growler. I was like, what is this machine? And I, I was like, can I, can I watch you fill this uh, growler up with this machine? It's the Pegasus system growler. It's a growler station peg from Pegasus system. And it slowly trickles the, it, it's first off, it sucks out all the air. Uh, so I guess it like deoxygenizes the bottle and then it slowly lets the beer just trickle down. So you don't lose anything. It just trickles down the sides. It doesn't go straight down. It just trickles down the sides of the bottle. And it's really fascinating to see. And then as it fills up and you get to the top, it's it like shoots CO2 into the bottle. You pull it off, you cap it like, or, or put the top on there, depending or, or screw the cap on. We had got a growler uh, filled and I think a whole week and a half went by before we were actually able to do our podcast that we sent to you the other day for the crafting couple. And um, the, the, the beer was still so completely fresh. I mean, just like it was coming off the tap. It's just a, a neat way rather than doing a growler fill from the from the tap dispenser. It's just a really neat system. And this place has it, you know, I said they're, and they're expensive machines. They're not cheap. He said this particular model was less expensive than a canning machine. I thought that was pretty fascinating. And uh, in, in many regards, too, because you would think it would be like tens of thousands of dollars. But no, so no, no. I, th I think they're a couple grand each. Um, and they, they are. Had, yeah. They, they must have quite a few of them there. Um, but but the interesting thing is, yes, you do you do reference it in the, the Crafting Couple, their episode number 007, if you will, um, oh, which wow. is currently on the, on the podcast where Ryan and Ashley talk about um, the Utopia from uh, from Sam Adams, talk about the, uh, the the machine that they they were visiting there at the brew. Um, and then the last piece I had for the for the episode was poor Melissa. So we'll leave that little stinger there. Um, but if you want to find out why we are feeling so bad for, for, for <laughs> Melissa, then um, you should just listen to the episode. So that is uh, 007 from The Crafting Couple. It's currently the most, uh, well, it'll be the second most recent episode. Poor Melissa. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> so that's it. Um, boys, do we have any other stories in the beer realm here before we move on to the geek news section? Because uh, we are, again, always short on time, and we have a lot to cover. So I, I have been drinking a lot of the Two-Hearted Ale, and that's <laughs> just creeping up my list. So... That's a yeah. good one. Two Hearted is That's real good. good. I don't think it'll ever replace. Well, Two Hearted, I, it wasn't Two Hearted like voted the number one beer of 2016. Yeah, ish. And Something like, uh, 17. Yeah. 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 And 17. Yep. Um, good stuff. Well, we got to move on to our geek news uh, section here. So this is where we talk about stories that we want to drink it on in or send it on back. It's up to you. But um, again, this pet, this portion is packed too. So first off, Dano, have you been playing? Mario Odyssey? I've actually not picked it up, so I was waiting to hear your review. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm guessing, I'm guessing the other, and I haven't even seen you guys, so so we haven't had a chance to play it together, but um, I'll, I'll be brief on this as brief as I can without spoilers, because I don't want to ruin anything for you guys, but um, everybody, everybody in the cast and listening, hopefully, has played Super Mario 64, correct? Everybody's played it? Yes. Hand up. Yep, yeah. that sounds, yep, Ryan's, Ryan's shaking his head. Well, it's a, it's a fantastic game, and at the time, that was... Or still is, you know, probably one of my most favorite Mario games ever because it introduces this large world uh, capacity where you could kind of run around and do challenges and things as you wanted to. There was still a guiding story that kind of navigated you through the the whole journey. Um, Mario Odyssey is a page out of that book applied to uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild and then remastered to a fact where now Mario is in HD and it's it's fantastic. You have a plethora of new moves. And they all work perfectly. Um, they introduce a way where you take both Joy-Cons and you use them independently, which is kind of awkward at first. But once you kind of get the gist of it, um, handheld mode doesn't really, this is all on the Switch, of course, the Nintendo Switch. Um, handheld mode doesn't do it justice, but you can still play the game just the same. Or if you have a Pro Controller, you can use that as well. Um, but what I really love about this is that it brings the Mario that I loved out of N64 Mario and it puts it in HD with a brand new story and so much packed into this game um, that it's insane. I'm probably 80% through with it already, which is faster than I'd like to. Again, this is spoiler free. Once you get towards the very end of the game, it becomes very challenging. And then once you finish the game, you actually kind of hit the reset button in terms of you go back and experience all these worlds again, and there's a ton more to do. So, I've heard some mixed reviews about it may not be the number one game of 2017 because right now that's that that is still Zelda for me, uh, Breath of the Wild. But uh, this is a close second just because I love Mario so much and this really brings you back. And they add a, a few new metrics to it where you can throw your hat and possess people. So every basically every creature or monster that you see in the in the game you could become. So imagine walking around as a Goomba or one of those stretchy guys or a bird or a freaking dinosaur. You can do it all in this game and it's, it just makes it so much fun. So my review is, you know, nine out of 10, 9.5 out of 10. It's, it's a fantastic game. There, there's very little flaws and the only flaws there are the story's real weak and the, some of the levels can be smaller than I, I think they should be. I think Mario, every yeah. Mario story is the same. So this one's a little different. It's a twist. It's, it's the same. It's the it's same, nice. but it's, it's a little different <laughs> and they have different characters in there. Um, but the worlds are expansive and even the smaller ones are still crazy and just, they're just packed with all this extra stuff to do, which even makes exploring small and large worlds so much fun because like, it's, it's the perfect game. I say that you can just plug in for 30 minutes, but then you look at the clock and it's been three hours and you're like, holy shit. So, so <laughs> you just start winding a path and you, you unlock this and you find that and then you go here and then you, you say, well, what if I, what if I jump backwards that way? Or what if I use this complicated move to do this? And then, oh, now I can get here and now I'm there. And then all of a sudden it's like I said, been three hours. So I love it. I love it. But and you're late. I won't learn it and... since. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, oh, it's, all it's, down it's, it's, it's like now a spiral. Yeah. I mean, really it's a, it's a one way ticket to not getting anything done. No, that was Zelda for me. For that, that was uh, Breath of the Wild for like the first three months. I was like, no, this is my life now. This is yeah. what I'm doing. Yeah. I had Zelda Breath of the Wild <laughs> in the hospital room after Maybury was born. Like, that was me. That's responsible. <laughs> <laughs> yep. 
No, that's oh, good. She, she's here now. Okay, okay. Uh, make okay. sure you bring my. <laughs> make sure, <laughs> make sure in laws bring my games. <laughs> just, hold on, hold on one second. Just, just hold on one second. I'll be right there. I just gotta get this last little checkpoint. Okay, get, we're good. <laughs> you just missed the birth of your child. <laughs> we need you to cut the cord now, sir. It's been eight hours. No. <laughs> Can I use the master I sword? To... <laughs> yeah, right. Can I use the master sword? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh god. Um, that's good. All right. So that's my my short review of Mario Odyssey. Uh Dane, the last episode that you were not on, I don't know if you have either of these either, but we talked about um Assassin's Creed Origins coming out and um uh, Wolfenstein. So Think about that if you have any input. Uh, we'll, we'll carry this conversation, as Ryan mentioned before, on the uh, Facebook page that we have, Craft Brews and Geek News. If you just fa- go to Facebook and, and look for that group, you'll find it. It's a public group, so we're, we're everybody's welcome to join the conversation. It's where you can actually ask some questions and, and chime into the show. We've got a couple at the end of the show here, but we have much more news to get to, so we're going to keep on moving. Um, boys, we had a, a day. I'm so happy you joined us last, last as well, of course, Ryan, but um, we had a very interesting piece of news announced today this is a hot scoop hot scoop today sweet deed. um <laughs> sweet deed. we got sweet deeds that's for sure deeds. Uh. star wars episode nine of course is, is coming out next year ryan johnson has just been signed up to complete the next trilogy of the star wars franchise this will actually function as a non-linear story so it won't be focused from the skywalkers uh, but it will be another trilogy um, Kathleen Kennedy said herself, you know, they've they've all loved working with Ryan the Last Jedi, um, and he's a creative force. And watching him craft the Last, Je- Last Jedi from start to finish is one of the greatest joys of her career. Um, Ryan's going to do amazing things with the blank canvas that is this trilogy. He will write, he will direct the new trilogy, and again, this will not um, be be part of the Skywalker story, but it will be continued after Episode um, eight and nine. So, again, this literally came out today, um, but I wanted to get you guys' thoughts on this. Ryan and Dane, well, Dane and Laos and, you know, everybody here. So, so let's talk about it. What do you guys think? It's huge news. It's interesting to see where, they're, well, where they will go. Um, you know, they can go anywhere in any direction they want to, and, and hopefully they, they do it justice and do it right, which I think they will. So. Well, Ryan, Ryan Johnson holds a special place in my heart because when I was at um, – Star Wars Celebration 2017, I was in the interview room, you know, I got to speak to him, got to meet him, yeah. um, got to know. So I, I I know that uh, this just gives me more faith in the fact that they're going to do episode uh, eight real well. He will. And and um, and I just can't wait to see what this new trilogy looks like. And I can't wait to see where Ryan goes. But Ryan uh, Johnson is going to be the director for the foreseeable future for Star Wars that I'm just the most fascinated with because of that connection. So um, this, I have a special place in my heart for this, but I, I think it's going to be fantastic. Correct me if I'm wrong, but do – okay, so let me let me ask a point here. Do the Star Trek series, do those ever intertwine, or are they all completely different, like Voyager and, and all? Like, are they completely different? Do their storylines ever intertwine? No, I have a point to this last man. I do. Like, I, I just, I'm not – Dane, you, you probably have more Star Trek knowledge than I do. I, I was never I was never a Trekkie. Well, we'll go ahead. Go ahead and finish, Ryan. So, so my my question there before I say this: if they're gonna make something that's uh, not linear to the Star Wars that all of us know, do you think they're going to make something that somewhat takes little jabs at the the Star Wars world we know, or is it just gonna be completely different in the sense that it's not gonna take place before, after, in the middle, like? Where do you guys feel like it's going to, like the, 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 the trilogy, where do you guys think that that might kind of fall into place? Are they going to take before what we know the Star Wars world to be, after or in the middle or during the same time? Like, I, I guess that's kind of like my question. Where do you feel like they're going to fall the pieces in? Uh, put the pieces for in? Ryan's installments? Yeah, for, for, for the new trilogy. It's not going to be I, linear, it's, but... It's got to be, it's, it's got to be after, right? There's no way they can simultaneously do two storylines like that at this point now with the standalone like Han Solo or with Rogue One I understand that but but what do you think Tim or if, to me when I first heard the news I thought maybe they could be in a totally different galaxy and and Thrawn. do something totally different so even yeah. even far farther away than the far far away. <laughs> yeah, uh, maybe or closer well, who knows well <laughs> well snoke's snoke's supposed to come from you know the backwoods uh, beyond beyond version of of stars uh, or of galaxies and so is thrawn who's who's really kicking ass right now in rebels 
Um, I mean, there's a very good chance it could it could function out there as a as a separate but linear story. I highly doubt that because there's got to be tie-ins to bring it back to Star Wars, right? Somewhere there's got to be a connection, which is why I think it's going to be a continuation. But then that that I, I don't know. That's a good question, Ryan. Really good question. Just really hope I, uh, they stay away from the oh, it's a Death Star. Let's destroy it. It's another Death Star. Right. And oh, that Darth Vader. He was the worst. So I don't. I hopefully they don't go that route, and it's just something totally crazy and kick ass. Okay, so to to reference something that's not even out yet, um, I like the point of view, and this is just a, a you know me pointing something out here. I like the point of view of the upcoming uh, Battlefront Two. Took a totally different sort of uh, uh, sort of perspective on that situation again that would be from a uh a, a, you know a stormtrooper commando um and them being in shock that oh all this went down with the the death star and whatnot and you know kind of uh, i like that point of view i mean that's that's just neat because you don't ever no one ever thought of that no one was ever like ah gee i wonder what the stormtroopers think they're like nah, whatever man like they don't they can't find the droids they're looking for like what are you what are you even gonna do with that? Like, but like, so like, so what happens if it was something like that? Like, maybe what happens if it was like all, all you know, smugglers and friggin' bounty hunters, some, uh, like, some angry nobody, I yeah, fly tie fighters. Well, I, yeah, I think you know. So I, it's heyday, though. If you think about it, throughout the whole thing, the Empire, maybe not so much the First Order, but the Empire was this, the, the the controlling force for the galaxy, right? The entire galaxy. So the, the far reaches, the, the the you know populated planets. What if it was someone on the outskirts of that, where maybe there was not a rebel force, but a rebel force in terms of like a different band of rebels that that had joined forces from a totally beyond region that are still combating the, the empire. I mean, I, I don't know, but it would be interesting to see where and how, but Ryan has ultimate creativity. You heard Kathleen Kennedy to make this blank canvas. So of course he'll use the story group and stuff, but um, I just think it's fantastic to give him a chance and I, and I love his work and I'm very excited. This makes me very excited for, for the 16th. We go um, and see the, see the new movie. Absolutely. It's going to be a blast. Are they, are they doing down there in Florida? Uh, here in North Carolina on Thursday, starting at 3 p.m., they're showing the episode seven and then rolling it right into episode eight. Oh, wow, for, that's nice for the release! Yeah, yeah. So, we so we bought I, I bought all of our tickets down here, um, about an hour and a half before the the Monday night football uh, teaser came out because I knew what would happen. That teaser, they said they were <laughs> gonna sell the tickets, so I, I went, I was like, yeah, I'm just gonna buy some tickets. Bought them on there, and then all of a sudden they said they announced the teaser trailer. They're like tickets available now, and then all of a sudden Fandango's site crashed for a day and a half. So <laughs> I bought, I bought, I bought the best tickets I could given everyone's schedule. Now we all have jobs and, and full time work, so we couldn't go out there on a Thursday. But we will be there in spirit, and we will definitely be um, messaging you, Dane, and get you involved as we drink some of Ryan's home brewed uh, blue milk. Am I right, my friend? Oh yes, won't leave without it. <laughs> Good. We are um, so, so we are really pushing uh, our time here. But I have I have another story today. I was telling you guys in the text message and in the uh, the Facebook chat. We did a, a Facebook live. Um, but I was actually we the podcast Craft Brews and Geek News were invited to a media only preview um, of the Star Wars Power of the Costume um, at the Museum of Fine Art in Saint Petersburg uh, Museum of Fine Art. Uh, that was only today, so it was very exclusive to us. We were invited, which is very nice. Thank you again to the Museum of Fine Art folks there. Um, Mira and Sarah, who invited us out there, were a lot of fun. I got to meet and speak with the director of the Smithsonian Institution Traveling Expedition, Expedition? Exhibition uh, Service, Miriam Springle. Huge fan. She's a huge fan of Star Wars. She's a huge fan of the way the clothes brought the movie together and the way that uh, costumes in general bring pieces of art like this to work. We had talked about it previously, how much costumes are important. And, and we, we analyzed the trailer from the Force Awakens, which I referenced in the interview I had with her. I basically said, you know, she was talking about how intricate, you know, when you, when you see a Jedi in robes, it looks like they're wearing, you know, a potato sack and it's just flapping in the wind and it's laying however it will. But really, those are, are Chinese silks in, in interwoven to flow exactly like that on each body and each person and each style of walk. Well, 
we had to, we had, I remember specifically around this time last year we we dove into to when you first saw Ray in the belly of a star destroyer and she was wearing you know cover wrap hands and arms and feet and face and neck because she was in the middle of the desert right so there's there's heat and there's sun and there's there's dust but she also had stitched in stormtrooper uh, goggles that she cut out of a helmet right and we had we had talked about this in great detail so she thought that was very perceptive of us and she she appreciated the fact that we we actually took some time to to think about the costumes so uh very cool exhibit uh again very very much uh fun there's 60 costumes there uh from all sorts of eras of star wars uh they will be there at the museum of fine art for a long time i think till april 1st is what I believe the the closing date of that is. So if you are in the St. Pete, Tampa area, please check it out. Um, it is November 11th through April 1st, 2018 uh, for the general public. So check it out, it was a lot of fun. They got some interactive stuff there and uh, and I had an absolute blast. What do you guys think about that? Sounds cool. Yeah, I mean, to, to have like a neat little event that focuses on something that's like probably commonly overlooked but i mean it's always there like it's in your face and you under just don't realize it. underappreciated underappreciated right yeah if you really think about yeah, it that's... the costumes really tell the story of who the characters are how important they might be uh where they live so i know a lot goes into the costumes and to actually kind of show that off is really cool like that yeah i mean i i have the same sentiments on my sexy spider-man costume <laughs> I nice I play. think <laughs> I think it really I think it really reflects back to uh, like you said Dave, it's, the, it's the costumes and, and well and the music is also often underrated right because I was just listening to another podcast where they were talking about the the Star Wars the way it came to be and George Lucas literally flipped the coin not flipped the coin but one of the options was to go with John Williams and take a, a classic symphony approach and build that story and make that soundtrack so powerful as it was or go with a 70s disco soundtrack which if you could imagine <laughs> taking taking it as seriously as we do with uh with uh you know <laughs> I don't, bow, yeah, bow, disco bow, soundtrack bow, 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 bow. <laughs> yeah. they, robot chicken did a real good robot chicken did a real good rendition um where it's Darth Vader on roller skates and he dances his way through the entire Death Star, and it's fantastic. Like, he does, like, the shimmy, shimmy, shimmy forward and shimmy, shimmy, shimmy backwards with a stormtrooper at one point. That's awesome. We had another story here that I'm going to save for next week, uh, for next time, uh, just because it was timely. I saw Thor Ragnarok. Uh, had anybody else seen that yet? Not yet. Negative. All right, so I'm I'm gonna say I'm just gonna cut this out, but I'm gonna save it for next time because it speaks to Marvel and how successful they're doing, and that's all good. But we do have some fan fan questions today, guys. So if we got a couple minutes, I have a couple beer related ones, Ryan, that we got from the the Facebook group, and then I have a couple uh, Star Wars ones for you guys too. Uh, so let me start off with the Star Wars one, Dane. I don't, you're not a collector yet, but you're you're buying baby toys, right? Things yes. for for young Mabry. So. This is open to, to, to you guys, to you and Laos here. What is your most wanted but yet unproduced Star Wars toy? I mean, I, I have one, but it, it's a toy, but it's not. Um, and Go I think on. one of you sent it. I think one of you sent it out. It was, the, uh, it was somebody took their motorcycle for Halloween, and they made it look like a speeder bike. And then for the parts where the wheels <laughs> awesome. are, uh, no, no, this is actually really genius. For the parts where their motorcycle wheels would touch the ground, they had like hinged mirrors that reflected the ground. So literally when it drove by, you saw nothing where below this thing. It looked like it was levitating, but they were driving around on a motorcycle and it looked identical to a speeder bike. And then even to just sell it even more, they had the guy who was driving it as the guy who was driving it. And then there was... Um, uh, uh, some younger lady sitting in front of him who they were both dressed like um, I have a feeling you're looking at it now they were both dressed like no. great. well they were both dressed like um, the, when they captured Endor or when they you know, laid siege to Endor um, they had the helmets they had the tarp looking poncho looking things it's fantastic I mean they drive around New York City New York City looking like they're flying around on a speeder bike so that's the toy I want that's no that's that's fantastic I'm looking at a guy on a Segway 
<laughs> that has a cardboard cutout of a speeder bike all around him, and he's in full indoor <laughs> stormtrooper oh, garb. Boy. Yeah, I'm like, that's that's what I'm looking at right now, and it's freaking hilarious. <laughs> Watch that later. Uh, Dan, uh, you wanted to to see? Well, with my Star Wars collection or toys that I had or have, (laughs) oh my gosh, that's uh, that's pretty good. Oh boy. (laughs) Uh, Anyways, um, so the big thing I had when I was a kid with Star Wars were Legos. I had, you know, uh, X Fighter. I never had the Millennium Falcon, which I've always wanted, but they're freaking expensive. Um, my biggest, I think the greatest thing I ever did is I had a Naboo fighter, of course, the yellow one, and I actually had enough Legos to build a black and red one, same exact thing, but black and red. So that's how like crazy I was with Legos. So with Star Wars, there's nothing I've actually like really, really wanted and couldn't get a hold of. Um, cause other than that, I was playing with Dragon Ball Z characters. Yeah. So uh, right, yeah, right like that. <laughs> see the only thing uh, the only thing that i've always wanted which we i've never had because we had a lot of stuff i mean we had a lot of toys and stuff that were all star wars themed but um like being an adult now and in, in the fantastic age that we live in the closest thing i've seen is that new um i think it's lenovo ar headset where you get a lightsaber and you can kind of like all i want to do is be able to fight people with a lightsaber that's all i want i just want sure. it to be accurate I want to do it, and we live in this magical age where it's almost feasible. So my Star Wars toy is that, and I think it's coming very soon. <laughs> I hope. We've always had lightsabers, but they're always like crappy and plastic. And crappy. When, yeah. When you go Shitty after ones. each other, it you know you don't have a lightsaber long. anymore. So because <laughs> no, <laughs> I was no. a Jedi two years ago for Halloween, and so I you know I had to buy a cheap lightsaber, and it, was, it like it was like two feet long. And it was terrible. So, yeah. yeah, it sucks. All right, moving on. These are our lightning round here. One more Star Wars question, then Ryan. Actually, let me do a Ryan question here. Um, I had a question from Kyle B from Facebook, and he wanted to ask what your favorite malts or specialty malts were uh, to brew with. Now you've done thirty-seven batches. I again, I think I lost track around thirty-five, <laughs> thirty, somewhere in that ballpark. <laughs> Um, I would say my favorite one to, to brew with is, um, the two row Brees. And then I really like the caramel 60 and the caramel 80. Uh, why? I mean, why is that? Well, the, the two row is a good base malt. Um, it just, you can do so many different things with it. Donnie, the, the beer that I'm going to be brewing for your birthday, that's going to consist of a two row um the caramel breeze i really like reds it's it gives it that nice caramel flavor and 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 also it gives it that nice ruby red color so it really goes well with reds or you can also put it into porters and stouts and things like that and you'll get a little bit of a caramel on the back end so those are my two favorite to brew with but okay yeah. all right so back to star wars for laos and uh mr mr dano uh, you've been ta- this is timely because again I don't understand how this happened. This, this question was posed at about 5 p.m. that Ryan Johnson was making another franchise, uh, another trilogy. So guess what? You are now Ryan Johnson. You've been tasked with making the next Star Wars franchise. What would it be about? Uh, Laos Man and Dane, kick us off. I think Laos and I kind of agreed where we would want it uh, tied into some nobody who's who wants that power, who wants revenge on something or or what what not, kind of like Battlefront Two. I, don't you agree, Lars? What, what do you think? Uh, I agree, but to name names, <laughs> <Okay>. um, <laughs> to name <laughs> drop. Be, Alden, here we go. Yeah. Alden Versio. Stand by. Yeah, this is a bit of a name <laughs> drop. Uh, <laughs> so I would, uh, I would like to see uh, uh, the gentleman named Lobot. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Lobot. He, become an official DJ. Well, he's he's somewhat of a DJ, but eh, think about it. He's completely mentally tied into the city of, um, well, Cloud City, but uh, oh, very the, re- um, the headgear. Yeah, yeah head the, gear looks guy. like yeah, yeah the headgear. Head head mm-hmm. <laughs> Professor cool Xavier had headgear. <laughs> much but hear me out he's got the whole city tech tied into his little brain there i mean 
it'd be kind of cool. Maybe he like oh, yeah. is able to disconnect, and then he's like he can tie into fighters and like spaceships and whatnot. And he's like, "Hey guys, I got my headgear. Don't worry about it. Like I got this." Like, how cool would that be? I mean, I don't know. A franchise. Like a, I see franchise. him. I I do have a question about. I, I mean, something in a second. You, you might see him in the new Han Solo movie if he, if he's how on, great would that because be? he's Lando's aide or hopefully, whatever. Hopefully, he has hair. <laughs> no. Negative. Do not need it. Like, like I think those, it's are those those muffs like built into his head. Look like no. well, I think how that every, happens. I think every endeavor should just be like the first like minute or two should just be him greasing that up and sliding it on and being like, all right, like we're yeah, in like, it now. Like, terrible we're head like, travel like, from like he powers up right. some yeah. jerk Jedi. Yeah, right. he just powers up and he just goes Bzzoom, and maybe he makes a noise from THX like Bzzzoom. like yeah. Vader was a robot. Check me out. <laughs> <laughs> Dane gets it. Dano gets it. <laughs> All right, Ryan, you had you had a question, Ryan? Just a yeah, just a quick question. So, lightsabers, if I'm correct, are only used by Jedi or those that know Sith. how to control it. Correct? Yes. So, if you have a trilogy that's in a whole other universe, do lightsabers exist? Are there Jedi? They're just in a different universe. It's up, it's up <laughs> I get that. No, but what I'm saying is. This movie that's coming else. out is called The Last Jedi. They could be called something else. Well done, Dane. That was my question. There you go. Laser sword. Light Definitely. Saber. You see where I'm going, though? They're, they got this <laughs> or, movie yeah, coming yeah, out. It's The Last uh, Jedi. Like the good guys and those yep. special operations of those good guys could be called something, and, and that's their, their tool or weapon of choice. Yeah. If, I think okay. I think the, the Jedi and the Sith will echo across the galaxy and known universe to whatever. I don't think we're getting away from that, but – what I would like to see in my franchise would, would go back to Kotar. I think that would be pretty sick. And that's uh, Knights of the Old Republic. So that's a thousand, a thousand years before um, episode four, The New Hope came out. So a thousand years ago, what was that like? Because if you guys remember back to like Lord of the Rings when that started, right? The first opening scene in Lord of the Rings was this epic battle of the, of the, the humans and the orcs, right? And, they, and Sauron was there and they had this sweet battle. And then all of a sudden Saren's fingy got chopped off and the ring fell, whatever <laughs> it may be. So imagine, but imagine if we had the Sith, right? The bad guys with the red lightsabers. Then we had the blue and the green lightsabers and they had this massive person you know th- you know 100,000 each army just going to the death and we had generals and people and, and imagine that story told over three movies that would be yeah, yeah. Pr- pretty freaking yeah. cool and An it could story. operate yeah it, for the jedi specifically or or a yeah. d origin story right like what happened if there was a big battle that that caused this turmoil then then what was it we got darth revan darth bane i mean there could be a lot of really cool battles and stuff that happened there, or like so. or like how did how did the jedi become good and also experience the dark side like the whole yeah, the, segue well there's that. that there's the rule of two two that was created by by um I don't, it could have been Revan. I don't know. They blur them all together, but it would be a cool, cool time frame to explore. So that's what I would suggest. Anything else, guys? I I agree with that. Uh, but let's think about it. You know, it, we can have some some cool insight uh, into the administration of Cloud City with Lobot. I mean, <laughs> drop the Lobot. <laughs> you really want like, the Lobot? Like, like, what if he has like a day that's fully packed with meetings, and it's just like it is a bruiser. You know, you're talking. He just continues to nod, and he has to meet with sanitation for Cloud City. He's got to meet with friggin', uh, I mean, uh, traffic people. He thinks he's somebody, but he really isn't, because he's that guy who's like, "Yeah, we captured you," but he didn't have a gun or anything. You know, jerk. You're nobody. He's a a flip flopper. I'll give you that. But I mean, look, I'm I'm getting off on the tangent here. I'm just saying, (laughs) think about it. Robot, the robot, man, do it. Lobot the robot. I mean, that's ugh. all right. That's again, whatever. <laughs> or, you guys right. after, after the Han Solo, the instead of Yoda or Boba Fett, will do he just Lobot the robot? Yeah, he just and he just goes back to filing like after all the Cloud City stuff's done. He's like, Well, that was crazy. And he's like, Well, I'm just gonna just gonna file all this stuff. This is nuts. Like, these can you believe these files? And he, you know, I don't know. And maybe the maybe the guy with the vagina face is there and he's like, I know, right? These files, right? <laughs> I don't know. That's not vagina face. He has a name. I'm not going to learn it. (laughs) Stupid. 
I think it's like don't like him. Nenwib. Is it Noob Noob? Who's that? Is it Noob Noob? No, it's not Noob Noob. Now I got Noob Noob stuck in my head. <laughs> I think it pissed off my neighbors. Although he, if you Google if you Google the China face Star Wars, you find him. <laughs> Do you really? Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm looking at yeah, right my... Nian Nub. His name is Nian Nub. Ugh. Noob that's is what you're trying to say. He's, he's hard to say look at. I don't he's understand him on how he even made it. Man made nub. it into the movie. <laughs> All right, this is spiraling. This is spiraling so hard. Ryan, bring what us back on track. <laughs> nope. Uh, Ryan. I'm here. I'm with I'm with you. I'm with you. All right, let's fuck this up. <laughs> um, you get two different Star Wars characters if you Google vagina face, but that's whatever. Anyway, so I'm gonna do it now. You also get the guy that got his arm chopped off. Remember? He's like, this is gonna be a good day. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yep. Um, I got it. <laughs> all right. Uh, Ryan brings back on track. Last question. Our, uh, this is a question from Connor M on Facebook again. First time kegging. I'm, uh, all I'm getting out of the tap is foam. Can you help me? What am I doing wrong? Yes. Your CO2 pressure is way too high. Way so too high. When you tap your keg for the first time or when you, when you put it on CO2 for the first time, I should say, give it about a day and a half, maybe two, put it at 35 pounds PSI. Let it sit. When you're ready to pour that out, let the CO2 out. You gotta you gotta tone down your uh your your, your CO2 a little bit coming from your your uh, your neon tank. nub. There you go, your nub nub whatever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then you gotta let some of that pressure out of the CO2 or uh, some of that CO2 pressure out. Get it down to about. I like to pour at about six to seven PSI. Everybody's a little bit different, but try to get your PSI down to about six or seven and then pour and eliminate that. Another factor can be the temperature that your kegerator is set at. If your if your kegerator temperature is way too high, you can get more foam on the beer. Uh, depending on the style of beer that you're at or that you're that you're tapping. You want to make sure that your temperature is low enough. A lager, you need a lower temperature. An ale could be a little bit higher. A stout, you know, maybe 45, somewhere in that ballpark too. So, but definitely check your CO2 pressure. That's probably where it's at. Fantastic. So, Connor, hopefully that helps you. Uh, Thank you, Kyle B., Mark S., and Jake L., all from Facebook. If you'd like to submit us a question, um, hop on Facebook or Twitter. You simply use Brewmasters Club Cast as a hashtag or join our Facebook group. Uh, Go on to Facebook and look for Craft Brews and Geek News. We uh, thank you as um, as uh, loyal podcast uh, fans, listeners, and content creators here. We just want to say we have a great time doing this for you guys, so we appreciate it. Um, boys, we talked about a lot of stuff tonight. Um, thank you all for supporting Ryan with the charity. Please go check out uh, the uh, Star Wars Power of the Costume at the St. Pete Museum of Fine Arts again through April uh, 1st of next year. And um, let's see, do, 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 anything else that we missed out on? Let us know what you think about the trilogy stuff with Ryan uh, Johnson. And uh, and boys, uh, close on out. Anything else that you want to uh, to cover here? Just let us know how excited you are for the Lobot trilogy coming out. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> 2019. December 19, 2019. I don't know. Next bring, year. It's coming out two years from now. It's coming out two years. Uh, yep. <laughs> uh, the first one is uh, 2019, 2019, on the 19th. Bring your bring clickable, preferably for all the filing that you'll need. To follow along with the movie. Lo- <laughs> Lobots aside, uh, happy <laughs> Veterans Day to all the veterans out there on Saturday. Uh, thank you for your service. Thank you for everything you do. And uh, happy birthday to all my Marines out there, November 10th. Simplify. Power to you. Thank you for your service, Dane. We appreciate it. And everybody out there, we do agree. Please have a great, um, safe uh time and weekend we appreciate you all and um stay tuned for the star wars uh power of the costume interview that i'll put up there i've got some some footage to match that so we'll have a nice little uh piece to go on that one stay tuned on the channel here we'll have the audio there or on our youtube channel um find us on youtube twitter instagram and facebook at brewmasters club cast boys where can they find you find me at brewboy813 on the uh, twitter machine and instagram and also november 18th in Safety Harbor 
going to be uh, taking about 24, 22 ounce bombers of the Wildfire IPA. Come on out, try it out. It's a little brewery competition, but it's also a big uh, Safety Harbor Fest as well. So cheers. All right, Mr. Lausman, where can they find you? So I can be found at Mr. Lausman. Uh, just drink <laughs> weird beers and getting, getting cool with it. So. All right, and Mr. Dano, thank you for joining us. Where can the good kids find you? On Twitter, at DTMert, uh, PSN, Main Dirt 11 and Snapchat, same thing, Main Dirt 11. All right. Well, uh, thank you once again. And as we say at the end of every podcast, Mr. Lausman. Love it, love it, dab, dab. No, that's not our catchphrase. You can't say that. Uh, okay, wait, wait, wait. Can I do another one? Can I just, can, no, no, no. Can I do a different, can I do a totally different one? If it has to do with Lobot, I swear to God, I'll kill It's you. not going to. Oh, my God. The guy didn't even talk in the movie. Like, how is it going to have to do with him? If you just do this and it just goes out. <laughs> if I just do this? Nope. Wait. All right. Go ahead. Three, two, and. I ain't never. <laughs> That's I'm it. sorry. Good night. Good night, everyone. Thank you. For, oh, thank come you. on. Thank you for tuning in. Good, good night. Uh, oh, Cut down all the good stuff. You've been listening to the official podcast of the Brewmasters Club, craft brews and geek news. Grab a beer with the guys and be sure to subscribe to catch additional content. Add this podcast to your favorite RSS feed or iTunes. Chat with the guys on Twitter at Brewmasters Club and Facebook and online at www.brewmasters.club. Cheers. <laughs>